Brad, good morning. No sound, my man, no sound. You got yours muted. Hey. Hey, man. How you doing? Cool. Hey, buddy. Good thing I got you here. Hey, I, I want to ask you <clears throat> real quick. Um, man, how, these, all these leads, how are you turn them into actual, like, clients? And, like, I don't even know, like, a buyer, buyer brokerage agreement exists until, like, two days ago. Okay. Well, how, how do you go from that process from saying, hey, my name is, you know, David Landsman to, boom, sign here on this, on this agreement. Let's go up to looking at houses. Great. Um, I can help you with that. <laughs> you could. So a lot of it is the excitement of it, right? Yeah. Let's see if, uh, I'm just gonna show you a little bit about how I, I, uh, how I converted buyers in my career. Because you got, I go into it, I go into it a couple of different ways. I go into it as. I, 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 you know, I'm not a negative person that, by any stretch of the imagination, but I think that you set yourself up for failure if you go into this thing thinking every lead is going to convert, okay? Yeah. Then it's discouraging. Um, the statistics are one in 40. Okay. So one in 40 are going to go to the closing table. So by knowing that, I think that... Um, it alleviates a little pressure on you, right? Because if you get a lead over and, you, and you're thinking, oh my God, I, this thing's going right to the closing table. This is awesome. Then all of a sudden they ghost you. You don't see them. Uh, they don't answer you back. You know, a lot of things like that can happen. And I think it leads to um, kind of a letdown. So I always think this way. In order to become the 1%, and that's what we want to be, right? As top producers, we want to be the top 1% of agents in the world. We have to be able to do what, what the 99% won't do. And that's a lot of that mostly is follow-up. So I said there's two types of people in the world of real estate. There's sharks and there's dolphins, right? So dolphins are fun, playful. And if you think about applying that to a buyer, right? They may not be honest with you. They may be talking to you, talking to me, talking to all these people, right? Uh, because they, they're under the impression that if I don't get this offer in immediately, I'm going to lose the house or, or, you know, so I got to talk to a million agents. Also, they may think that an agent gets paid just to go open up a door. So the buyer brokerage agreement, you, you know, you, you kind of use that as an explanation to tell people, um, you know, I'm your agent. You don't go outside this box. I'm the person that's going to help you, right? And in the mindset of purchasing real estate is likely to be the biggest and most complex financial tra transaction a person will make in their life. A trusted real estate professional is a strong advocate who understands the information and emotional support that buyers need throughout the process of finding and acquiring a home. As an expert with local market knowledge, real estate pros should be well prepared to guide buyers through all the practical details and potential obstacles that may occur during the purchase process, right? So by reading through that, what does it really translate to? What is Brad's value to this client, right? Yeah. It's always about that. <clears throat> I also like to think of it as treating every customer as if they're my grandma, right? Some, agent, some agents don't even understand, right? Like for instance, I got over a lead the other day. I'll read it to you verbatim. I kind of sound like an asshole, but it is what it is, right? Yeah. So, what the heck is this thing? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> she says, uh, so I answered the phone. It was Cena was her name. And Cena wanted to go find, go look at this house. And um, I said, great. Let me line it up with the agent and I'll let you know. And um, so started talking with her and um, I said that I got us in. She wanted to see it that day, it was a Sunday. She said, all right, cool. I, um, I said, I got us in for one o'clock, I'll meet you there. She said, thank you for the quick response. My agent was actually in church and she just responded. 
So literally she couldn't get a hold of her, her, her agent. And, and then within the hour or whatever it was, she's contacting all these other agents to get in this house. She doesn't care, right? So I, I kind of made me mad, right? Because here I am like telling my wife and kids, hey, listen, I'll be back. It's be about three hours, about an hour away, show the house, and I'll be back. And I said, please know that realtors only earn money if they close in a home. They do not make money showing homes. If you have an agent, please don't reach out to other agents. I'm sure your agent is doing a great job and that will be very unfair to them. I wanted to hammer home to there. Shouldn't be doing this stuff, right? But I also kind of kept it under my cool because I treat everybody like they're my grandmother. And I don't think you can really understand anything unless you can explain it to your grandmother, right? You're not gonna ever yell at your grandmother. Like, I don't care. It could be your girlfriend, your wife, your best buddy. If, you have, if they're not getting something, you're gonna be like, dumbass. Like, do you, what don't you understand about this? You're never saying that to your grandmother, right? You're going to be like, oh, come here. Like, I remember teaching my grandmother how to get on the internet for the first time. Come here, Graham. I mean, it took seven hours. But I didn't care, right? A couple of things, too. Greet every customer immediately. Whenever you get a lead, greet them immediately. I don't care what it is. Hey, good morning. Da, da, da. Right? This is Brad with Lancer Real Estate Group. He just contacted me with this, right? Read their body language when you're talking with them. You can yeah. tell almost. You can almost tell if they have an agent or not, right? It, it, let me ask you, like the biggest thing is like when you get these ops, ops leads or, you know, these leads from, from online where it's just a phone call in like, hey, I'm Robert, this is, this is whoever, they like to buy a house. When I accept, say, okay, I'll accept. And they call in and at that point, you know, they're like, hey, I was looking on this property or whatever, whatever. you know, you're like, hey, my name is, you know, David Lance with Land Real Estate. Um, <clears throat> let's go look at the house or like, how do you, how do you proceed? You say, let's meet up first, let's have a buyer consultation. You know, where do you, where do you go with that? From that point? Yeah. So, so I used, I used the initial, uh, visit into the house as my buyer, um, consultation. Okay. Okay. So my, my thing is I want to get in front of that person immediately. Yes. As fast as I can. Right. So I'm like, Brad, good afternoon. This is David wow. uh, no. Lantern. Op City just connected us for me to represent you uh, and, and get you in this house. Tell me a little bit about what you love about it. Oh man, we just love the location. And immediately, the reason why I do that is because this, when I ask them a question, it shows that I care about them, right? It shows yeah. I'm caring. I don't care about getting them in the house. I don't, what do you love about it, man? I, I wanna know, like, what made you click on that button and say, this is the house for me and my family? And then just start making notes. Good. <clears throat> right. And I think by going down this line, it helps clear your mind when you're talking with you. Never prejudge. Right. Some agents are like, oh, man, it's a hundred fifty thousand dollar house. This person's poor. They can't afford anything better than that. And their, their attitudes are already different. I never prejudge. I know people that click on hundred fifty thousand dollar houses all the time and they end up buying three hundred fifty thousand dollar houses. Yeah. They're just not educated in the market. <clears throat> Make an impression that will last a lifetime for me. That's what I try to create excitement. Oh my God, man, this house, you know, the market right now is red hot. The thing's only been listed for a day or two. When are you guys available, right? Tell me a little bit about why you love this house. And then while you're doing that, I'm going to see when I can get it and take a look at this thing for it because I don't want it to get snapped up if it's something that you love. Yeah. Right? And you're not even going to ask them about pre-qualification pre at that point because you just want to get no. in front of them. Okay. I don't care. I, all I want to do is get in front of them. Yeah. I need an interview. I need an interview. I mean, imagine this, imagine this, right? You're going to get, you're going to apply for a job. Let's do it, put in the corporate world. You're going to apply for a job at, at IBM. Imagine walking in there and be like, all right, listen, what's the salary? When's my first paycheck coming in? Like, hold on a minute, man. Calm down. You haven't even interviewed yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Own your products. Think like a salesperson. Be honest, right? Everyone is a potential customer. Remember to treat every customer like you would treat your grandmother. Okay. So you're going to get leads from all these different places, open houses. You're talking about getting off city leads. Uh, there's a couple other ones that are coming up um, that I'm working on this week. But no matter where these leads come from, right? Look at it like this. Are you a half full or half empty guy? Which one? I'm usually half empty, but I mean, I can be half full sometimes. <laughs> I love the answer. It's very honest. I'm neither one of those things. I'm neither one of them. Okay. Maybe you fall into this category with me. I am thankful. The hell is that? 
I'm thankful that I have a glass with anything in it at all, and I'm gonna make something out of it. Oh, okay. Okay, that's how. That's literally where I am. If you give me a drop in a glass, I'm gonna make it full. Right? I'm just grateful that I got the opportunity to meet with this client. Yeah. I used to run a very large team, and I'll tell you how these people failed at real estate. When a lead came over, they asked, "Is it a good lead? What's that? I don't even know what that freaking means. Is it a big house?" What's the price point? Are they pre-approved? I'm not driving that far. It's a bad time of day. I'm not working with rentals. Too short a notice. The home is pending. Attitude is like a flat tire. If you don't change it, you'll never go anywhere. And that's what I looked at. And that's why I was successful. Any lead that came through, I took. Anyone. Okay? I'm not going to go through this. You know the, you know the, the, the process, right? No, yeah, not at all. Okay. You're going to qualify that buyer. You're going to meet with them first, right? You're starting with them. You're going to meet with them. You're going to qualify them and you want to meet at the home. That's your consultation. You're going to go through the consultation process. Hey, this is what, take, print the buyer brokerage agreement. I mean, the uh, buyer's guide with you, right? Print a couple of them out, take it with you. And then when you're in the side of the house with that person, you literally just go through it. Hey, listen, while well, we got a couple minutes, I don't know where you are in the process of buying a home, but this is what I like to do. I like to guide everybody that I work with. So there's no surprises along the way. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to get pre-approved. Have you already spoken with a lender? No. And this is on your, this is on your initial visit when you're in face-to-face with them. Inside the home, probably. No, you haven't talked to a Great. I have an amazing lender. I'm going to shoot you over. Matter of fact, what's your cell phone number? Because you don't know what kind of number they gave off city, right? So while you're standing there, you say, what's a good cell phone number for you? Okay. And they give it to you and you immediately text them over Jamie's information. Now yeah. they have it, right? Yeah, I've been, I've been attaching the emails and they just don't respond, so. <clears throat> I never do that. I always ask for a cell phone. Hey, give me your cell phone number. I'm going to text you over. I also include it in a text message, right? I just did it the other day. Here, I'll read it off to you. <clears throat> This is exactly. So you can see my text in the little picture. Yeah, sorta. I mean, I'm just, I'm just kind of showing you, so you know, I'm not bullshitting you. All right. This is what I said. I included the client and Jamie in a text message. The reason why is because now I'm following up with her, and so is Jamie. It goes uh, into two systems. Now you have someone backing you up. Now there's two people they have to ghost, not one. Okay. So my text message went like this. Good afternoon, Layla. It's always great to speak with you. I have Jamie Decker with EPM Equity Prime Mortgage included in this text. Jamie's a senior loan officer and someone I consider an expert, so I know he can help. Jamie, Layla is one of my favorite clients ever, so I appreciate you taking great care of her. Jamie immediately responds. Layla, nice to meet you. David mentioned you're looking to refinance. I'd be more than happy to help. Let me know when you have some time to chat. We can go over everything. Layla immediately texts back. Thanks for getting in touch with me. We're currently trying to keep a lock in a rate, blah, 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 blah. And now from this point on, I have only sent one text message and there is a page, pages and pages that I can see what, that they're texting back and forth. Yeah. Okay. It's a completely different, um, it's a completely different atmosphere because now there's two people. I also look like for you as a brand new agent, you look like you have this team backing you up. Yeah. Okay. So you do that. You do the text message to Jamie. He starts the process. Now is when you start talking to them about, are you working with an agent? Ah. Right? The way this works is this, guys. This is a buyer brokerage agreement. And I mean, hell, you might even want to put it in with your, buy, your, buyer, uh, 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 your buyer's guide, right? Let me just go over this just a little bit with you. I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but you don't pay me a dime to represent you going into the market. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to negotiate the best price possible for you. I'm going to have your best interest in mind. I have a team of experts behind me. It includes home inspectors. Um, it includes appraisers. It includes lenders and includes closing attorneys. I will represent you to the fullest from start to finish. Do you have any questions about that? No, pretty much covers it. Um, and they're going to say, they may say something like, well, what is this 6% I see on the, uh, or 3% that's on this buyer brokerage agreement? Well, 
the seller actually is going to pay me my commission. Isn't that crazy, Brad, that, that I'm going to represent you going to the market and the seller, I'm going to negotiate the best price possible. And he's going to sell me, he's going to pay me my commission. You don't have to do a thing. So with that, you don't pay anything. So you have full representation. I would like you to sign this buyer brokerage agreement because what that does, it, not, it shows a commitment not only from me to you that you have my undivided attention throughout this process, but I also want some kind of commitment level from you that after we drive away, that I'm your agent. Is that fair enough? Because I'm going to go to work for you immediately. I'm going to start pulling comps, start pulling available homes in the market. I'm going to be at your beck and call. You have a question along the way. I don't care if it's at 10 o'clock at night. Shoot me over text. I'm your agent. I'm there for you. After that, we're going to find some homes. I'm going to make some showing appointments. Here we are in step number four. We're going to narrow it down to properties considered. When you go out, Brad, I wouldn't show more than six houses to anybody. That's your limit. Um, you're going to make an offer. Hold on. What, six, six houses within a three-month limit or within no. a limit? In, in one day. Okay. Do not show more than six houses. Yeah. That's your limit. Because people can't remember. Yeah. They look at six houses, they're going to be like, man, I don't remember anything. You better be taking notes too. Do you show up with anything in your hand to give it to them when you're, when you're, uh, at the great house? question. I'm just going to get to that. You always have the great question. Yeah. Keep them coming. All right. So let's say I'm going to go show some homes in Roswell. Okay. I'm going to show some townhouses under $600,000. There's 13 matches. There's no way in hell all 13 matches are going to match the criteria of my buyer. So you go through it, right? Do you like this one? They may say, I'm just not feeling that one, David. All right, great. How about this one? Ooh, I really like that one. So right here, I click it. Little thing at the top, okay? Then I go, ooh, I really like this one. That's Timber Creek. Are you like, are you, are you zooming them in at this point? Am I what? Zooming them in? Am I zooming them in? Are you, put, are you literally putting this screen in front of them? And saying, hey, which, which one do you want to look at? No, this is what I do. Okay. I go and I talk to my client. And I say, Brad, where are you looking? I'm looking in Roswell. Okay. You got a pre-approval letter for 600000 and below. Okay. 600 Roswell. And then we're doing do townhouses, attached properties. Okay. And then I go down here for results. Yeah. And I go save. I do new auto email. And here's where I add my new contact. Whatever kind of salutation you want, right? And I save it. Okay. I put a subject in there. Roswell. Available homes under 600K. And then I just do like a little message. It was great meeting you. I look forward to working for you. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Here's a portal. I tell them about the portal. And then it's going to go to that person every single morning, okay? Follow me? Yeah. Okay. So every morning when I co come into my matrix, every morning, I go down to contacts. In there, I will see the contacts that, I've, that I have loaded in my FMLS. And I can spy on them. I can see when do they last use it? When's their last portal visit? Right? Like Abby was on this thing five, four days ago. 
Mark was on it a couple of days ago. You can see here are his favorites, and these are ideas. Okay. So, like, let's say, what the hell is she looking at houses for? My word. All right. So, let's say this is my client, Layla. And she says, David, do you have some time that we can go look at houses? I'm off work on Tuesday. I absolutely do, Layla. So, you have favorited three homes. Those three homes are closed and under contract. Okay. You see that? Yeah, yeah. So when I click on her, I can go to her searches. I can look at her auto email. Okay. So here's her auto email I set up for. Now I can look at the results. And these are all the homes that came up in her results. Now I can say, what did you think of Surrey Lane? I don't like it, David. Okay. She says, oh, I like Toby Road. Great. We'll put that on the list. She goes down. Oh, she really likes this one. And she really likes, God, there's only 18 houses in Brookhaven under 600. All right, she likes this, these three homes, okay? So what you can do is this. After I've picked those three homes, you can see I've checked three homes, right? I can go down here to directions. And what this will do is it will put a map oh, so I'm sorry. not driving all over the place. Yeah. Okay? What I like to do from this point is I like to email this over to my client so she knows which homes we're looking at. Then I go back, where are we at? And then I go back to my single line and I have those three houses checked, right? And I print them because I want to take the sheet with me. I print an agent full, so I have all the information. And you can see that it has all the information on the home, okay? I staple them in order of how I'm gonna show them. So I don't have to worry about like printing the map out and all that junk, right? I also then print out a second copy for a buyer full for my client. The buyer full does not have any information at the bottom from the, uh, on the agent that's listing the home. You don't want to give that to them because they might call the agent up, okay? So as soon as we get to the home, again, I have this staple for them. I say, here's our three homes we're gonna look at. You know why I do that? Because I want her to be able to look down that sheet as she's walking through the home. I also wanna have the, the agent full so I know everything about the home. When was it built? When was it this? I also, for effect, do this. After we view Toby Road, I say, Layla, are we gonna put this one on our list? Is this a possibility? And if she says no, I take the piece of paper and I take it off the staple and I crumple it into a ball for effect to let her know we're never coming back and looking at this house, okay? That's my protocol Good. for every listing, every showing. Okay. After you go under contract, you're going to order a home inspection immediately. The minute you go under contract, you order the home inspection from Ricky. You can go through the app. You can, you can email Vanessa, but you order the home inspection immediately. You'll have it back within a day. You'll call me up and we'll talk about if you should ask for repairs, if you could ask for money towards closing costs. At the same time that you go on, that you're ordering the home inspection and you're going under contract, you're gonna make one email and you're gonna include the closing attorney, the lender and your client. 
Okay. It'll look like this. Let's see. Here we go. So the email will look like this. Oh, she put it in the loop. Hang on. All right. So it'll look like this. Good afternoon. Hope you're having an amazing week. I can't wait to see y'all at the closing table. I included the closing attorney and my client. New contract and the property address. Because you want to start title, right? You want the closing attorney to start working on this package. You also want the lender to start working on, on the package. Okay. And then you'll get received. Thank you. Starting to work on it. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. At that point, after you've negotiated out after the inspection, you kind of just um, keep following up with your client. Hey, how are things going? You guys excited for the move? Have you talked? Have you gotten all the documentation over to the lender? You're going to call the lender, make sure that they have everything. You're going to call the lender and say, have you guys ordered the appraisal? Kind of stay on top of it. That's the reason why I use my Trello board so I can see where these things are in the process, okay? If we're in due diligence, I know I have to follow up with these people. I need to call the lender, right? If I'm in the appraisal state for five weeks, something's wrong. I wanna know where we are. So every day, if I don't have the appraisal back, I'm calling the lender. Hey, do we have an update? And after the appraisal state, you're gonna just be waiting to close. That's the easiest time, okay? But that's why I set up my boards like this because I wanna see what's going on at all times, okay? Good morning, David. Good morning, Ella. Okay, give me this again because I'm kind of lost you now. Once you present the offer, we get the offer accepted. You send the contract with the information, the attorney, the lender, and um, the attorney, the lender, the the contract. That's it. And what else? Mm -hmm. All all of your all of your documentation. So you include right. and your documents. So we go into a five days due diligence, uh -huh. and after due diligence becomes um, under contract. No. Nope. Is that when you? So you're under contract immediately. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so as soon as they accept it, they, the agent can turn that on the contract in the FMLS. Correct. And that's yeah. when the deposit is due right away or five days later? It depends on what the contract says, okay? So for instance, okay. for instance, uh -huh. I, signed, I sent this package over last night to an agent. Okay. Okay. This says that the earnest money has to be in within five days. Mm -hmm. Okay. This says that there's an eight day due diligence period. Okay. Okay. So everybody initials and signs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm listening. Yeah. At the bottom of this page, once everybody has signed. Right. They're going to bind this contract. Once mm -hmm. this is bound, you are officially under contract. Okay. It's once they sign it. Uh -huh. Once this is bound, you put an email together between your client, the lender, and the closing attorney. Okay. And that is, you just open up escrow on the, on the account. So they started the closing process. Escrow, is that sending the monies to straight to the lawyers or do we have it somewhere else that we can well read deposit. what the contract says holder of earnest money will be elite group georgia mm -hmm. so within five days of this contract being bound mm -hmm. this elite group georgia needs to have received one thousand dollars who's elite who is this elite Group Georgia. Is that the lawyer? 
that it seems like um, her brokerage. It's her brokerage. The buyer's brokerage. Oh, okay. This is a deal yourself. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I'm listening. Um, so you're under contract and then you order the inspection. You have mm -hmm. eight days to negotiate that inspection. Okay. After that period of time, if the buyer terminates this contract, this thousand dollars goes to the seller. During this eight day period, your buyer can terminate this contract for any reason or no reason whatsoever. Listen to that. For any reason or no reason whatsoever. Your client, can call, you. your client can call you up and say, I stubbed my toe, cancel my client contract. Mm -hmm. And they get their earnest money back. But you just said that the seller keeps it in case. Uh... No, I did not say that. No, I did not. I said after the eight days, the seller can keep the, the earnest money. Oh, after the eight days. During okay. the eight days, the buyer can terminate for any reason or no reason whatsoever. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And after the eight days, that's when we order the inspection or we have to order before that? The, uh, everything needs, uh, your inspection, all negotiations need to be done during that due diligence period. If okay, you get the, the home inspected, if you get the mm -hmm. home inspected and you go past this, you cannot mm -hmm. ask for a thing. Oh, okay. Okay, because I, I, I was out looking for houses and I'm actually leaving soon. I got to go see a new construction. Mm-hmm. And um, we came across a nice house for my daughter and they said that they waived everything. That's why they, they put that on the contract right away. A townhouse up and coming. Sure. So, sure. you know, so um, I guess if it's newer and you want to waive it, that'll, that'll be a, another way of negotiating. It could be. Mm-hmm. Um, so this, it's important that this, all this document goes to, and you can see this, the, I put it all together, purchase and sale agreement. I have my loan exhibit in there. I have my contingency in there. I have my pre-approval letter. Everything goes to the lender, my client, and the closing attorney. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you were working with these buyers, and this is kind of something that you alluded to, Brad, is that when you talk to these clients on the phone, leads, things like that, you're gonna evaluate on, are they ready, willing, and able? So in your buyer presentation, when you are consulting with these people, you wanna ask these, these questions. Are they ready? If they're inside the house, looking at this house and telling you how much they love it, they're ready. Are they willing? That's a big one. Ask them. I literally use the word willing. I say, Brad, listen, if this is your dream house, as we walk through this thing, are you willing, are you ready and willing to write an offer today? They may say yes, they may say no. Well, we don't, one of my clients said, we don't like to make decisions that quickly. Well, you're in the wrong market, sister. I fired clients for that. I have a three time out rule, and I tell all my clients this. I said, I'm going to meet with you. I'm going to consult with you. I'm going to pay attention to you, and I'm going to love you. But I'm so good at what I do is that 95% of the people, find their home the very first time when we go out. Does that surprise you? And the people are like, oh, yes, it's very surprising. And almost 100% find their home within three times out. It's how much I pay attention to you. I'm not going to send you junk. I'm not going to take you out of houses that have, you have no business being inside of. But that's how good I am at what I've done. I do that for a couple of different reasons, guys. 
some people are just going to want to go look at homes. I want to go look at this so pretty. I want to go do this. I want to do this. Right? No, that's not what our jobs are. My job is to find you the perfect home for you and your family, make a great offer on it, and get your butt moved in. That's it. The able part comes in. Your lender's going to tell you, are they able to buy the home? That's where you say, hey, listen, I'm including you in with Jamie. He's going to give you a pre-qualification. Make sure that we're all good, what number we can shop for. The able part, somebody else does for you. Ready and willing, that's it. Start looking at your clients, right? And marking them, A clients, B clients, and C clients. A, within 30 days, they're ready to go right now. B, 30 to six months. C, six months or more. You got to circle prospect those people. You're going to have to touch them every month. Hey, just want to touch base. Hope you're having a great month. Rate these people. Brad, you're going to get a lot of leads over from these sources. They're not, they're not bad. Remember, I'll take a glass of the drop in and make the best of it. Those people go in my database. I nurture, 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 nurture. All of a sudden, one day they say, hey, man, I don't know if you remember me or not. We talked about buying a house seven months ago. Yeah, I remember you. I got a Trello board. They're like, what? Yeah, I, never mind. I pay attention. I got you. You guys ready to buy? We are. We're finally ready to buy. Great. Why don't I pull a recent search? We'll put together a list of some homes and we'll get out there Saturday. You available? We are. Awesome. That excitement. Okay. Some questions ready. If you currently own a home, don't forget if you get linked up with one of these buyer leads, don't, don't forget to ask, do you own a home? You guys remember I've made every mistake you can possibly make in the world of real estate. Every single one I've made. One time I'm working with a buyer and I never asked if they had a home to sell. I lost the set, I lost the sale. They went with another agent to list the house. So I, I could have had two deals. I got, only got one. What about if you didn't ask them, do you have a home to sell? And then all of a sudden you're writing contract and they said, oh, well, we needed to sell our house first. Well, now you're under contract. You have the possibility of losing their earnest money. Hey, do you plan on selling that thing before going to the market? Do you need to sell it? Yeah, we do. Great. I'll be over there tomorrow so I can take a look at this thing. See what kind of price we can go in there. If it is in the market, have you accepted an offer? If you have, when's it scheduled to close? Right? Also, that's a telltale sign that they're ready. Would you agree? Yeah. If, they have, if they've accepted an offer on their home, they need a place to live. That's a ready, willing, and able buyer. If they're leasing, when does your lease expire? Hey, listen, you know, in the market right now, if you do an all cash offer, this could be another thing, you know, we got to get out of the mindset. And I don't know how you feel about it, Brad. When I was a new agent, I felt like, oh my God, I don't know if I want to ask these people about their, about their uh, finances, right? That's a big question. But you got to, we have to do that. Hey, just throwing it out there. A lot of people are paying cash in today's market. Are you guys going to be using a lender or are you guys paying all cash? Just ask them that. A guy yesterday called me up from California. It was a referral from, a path, from another client I, I work with. I said, how you paying my man? Cash? Loan? No, no, I'm 20% down. Actually, he said 25 because I'm going to use it as a rental property. Great. Ask the questions. They'll tell you. Okay. When you were doing this home evaluation, this, this buyer consultation, go through and really, really pay attention to these people and ask them, what are your must-haves? What does this house have to have for you to buy it? They'll tell you. It has to be a ranch. You're going to have three columns. Give me your must. The house has to have these things. 
It has to have them or I'm not buying it. The next list, bonus. What would be something that if it had it, it would be like, man, this thing's awesome. And put it over the top. And they're going to tell you, swimming pool, hot tub, whatever. Pot filler for the stove, right? And, and what's the knockout list? Tell me something that if this house has it, you're walking away, no way in hell you're buying it. If you're working with couples, make them sit separately and fill out this sheet, okay? And then when you come back together, you have your sheet there and you make a master sheet. If she says three bedrooms and he says four, you say, hey, guys, listen, for some reason he wants four. Are you cool with just finding a four bedroom house? Yes. So she gets scratched and on your list, you put four bedrooms. And then she may say, it has to absolutely have, for a must have, a gas range. I love cooking. And the husband says, I don't give a darn what kind of stove we have. Great, gas range it is. And you go through this entire list until you have a formulated list of all the must haves, the bonuses, and the knockouts on one sheet of paper. And you crumple up both of theirs and throw it in the trash. And then what I do is I laminate that sheet. I make two copies. One for each of them and one for me. And I send it home with them. Or I email it over to them. And they're going to send you houses, right? They're going to send you houses, Brad, that they think they love. And all you need to do is this. So you don't waste your time. You go through the list and you look at the pictures in the, um, that's, uh, that's online. And if the damn thing's got an, an electric range, you tell her, hey, Susie, your must-have list says gas range. That house has an electric range. We're not going to look at it. Oh, but we could get it switched out. No, that wasn't in the agreement. The agreement was must have, has to have a gas range. We're not going to look at that house. So you're going to whittle down where these people want to look at 10, 15, 30 houses in a day down to two or three. Too many choices is going to, is going to kill your business. If you were going to look for a car and I took you to a lot and there's 200 co cars there and I said, Brad, go pick yours out, my man. How long would it take you to do that? And you got to look at every one of them. You'd be there for weeks. You got to test drive it. You got to test drive 200 cars and look at every single one of them. That would take you maybe a month. That's the same thing with houses. It's too much. But if I talk to you and say, hey, Brad, listen, what are you looking for in your next car? What is it? What it has to have? Has to have four doors. Great. How many of those 200 cars would just go out the window? 50, let's say. Now we're down to 150. What color? It's got to be white. All right, great. Now we're down to 35 cars. It's got to have a sunroof. Down to seven. It's got to be good on gas. So three, six cylinders or below. Here's your four cars you could choose from. Out of 200, I just whittled it down that fast. Same thing with houses. You have to do that. Okay. We talked about this. But tell the people this. This is why I use the, this is why I use that buyer's guy. They got the buyer's guy that you can print off of Lancer Connect. This is why I use it because it goes through this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to write a contract. Then we're going to inspect the house. Then we're going to find out about the repairs. I want you to get with the lender. You're going to do the lender requirements. The, in, the closing attorney is going to work on title issues. Then we're going to close on that, baby. And then you guys are moving in. And guess who's going to be there for every little step of this way? Me and you. Together. Explain it to them. Sometimes people don't explain anything to them. Okay. Over, overcoming objections from some of these buyers and these people that you're going to be working with on the leads, right? If they don't want to sign a buyer brokerage agreement, they don't trust you. They don't feel comfortable with you. Something's up. They don't want to commit to the commission. I've had buyers, they, hey, listen, we, we, we just can't work with the buyer. We need we, all the money we, we need to put down in the house. Good, you don't pay me anything, you idiot. How about if I sign the agreement after we go out and look at one or two more times? No. 
That means they're probably talking with 17 other agents. I had a guy one time, met him. Great guy. Went to go look at a home. He said, this isn't really the one for me, but see what you can find that's similar to this that had a couple other things. I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'll email it right over to you. So I get home, go to the office, turn up everything, start sending them on a drip, right? Start sending them home, just like I just showed you how to, that's called a drip thing I just set, set up on FMLS. We're yeah. going to get an email every morning with the homes called setting them up on a drip. So he starts getting the homes and he says, David, found eight of them that could work. Oh, awesome, my man, eight. I said, all right, I'm going to go ahead and schedule those up so we can get in there and take a look at them. In the meantime, I just emailed you over a buyer brokerage agreement. This allows me to represent you in case one of those eight work for you. We can write a contract. And he says, David, I'm not signing a contract with you yet. I don't know if you're my guy or not. And I said, all right, fine. So I took that one back and I wrote eight individual buyer brokerage agreements that only pertain to each one of those addresses. And he called me back. He said, what the hell are you doing, man? I told you I didn't want to sign a buyer brokerage agreement. I said, I completely, we're not doing that. We're not signing a buyer brokerage agreement. He says, this looks like a buyer brokerage agreement. I said, no, it doesn't. I said, if you read on there, all it does is it pertains to each one of those homes. Because if I drive out of here and I'm going to go show you this house and open the door and pull all the information on it, I'm your agent on that house, only on that house. And he said, damn it, just send me the one. I'll sign it. I was making a point. You're not going to do this to me. People may say, I have a friend who's a real. I mean, I always tell people this. You don't want to work with your friends. I don't care if your friends are real. Why would you want to work with them? I said, if, you, if it was, I said, have you, has your friend, have you ever texted your friend or, or called your friend and they didn't answer the phone? And they're going to say, yes. Okay, what if you needed some, something about the biggest purchase of your life and they didn't answer your call or didn't answer your text? You don't have to worry about that because I work for you, okay? They don't want to commit to one agent right now. Come on. I'm not ready to buy right now. Great. Then it's an excellent time for us to do some research together to find the ideal home that when you are ready, we can get out there and take a look at it. Okay. Three time out rule. You got to tell them this. Got to tell them this. It puts it in their mind, right? Because after three times out, my clients all say the same thing. They all say the same thing. Am I your worst client ever? And I always say the same thing. No, but you're getting there. I delete people all the time. Here. I fire clients all the time, man. I don't have time for their crap. Here, good afternoon. This was August 21st. Good afternoon, Lena. Sorry to just be getting back with you. Everything is okay with COVID and me and my, and my uh, friend that got it is fine. She actually got her doctor to give her hydroxychloroquine and she was fine 24 hours. I hate delivering any bad news, but after going along your home purchase journey with you and seeing where you are with purchasing, I've come to the conclusion that I can no longer represent you and Tommy. As much as I appreciate and like you both, I don't feel at this time you are ready to buy. The last home was absolutely perfect and I spent a lot of time working with the agent to work on an amazing deal considering the market right now. And when you chose not to move forward, I realized that I don't think you will ever be ready to buy. I have tried my best to rearrange my schedule and cancel things to get us in homes because I know how fast great homes go under contract, but I cannot continue to do that in good conscience, seeing now that you aren't ready. I hope you understand and I hope nothing but the best for you and Tommy both. I don't have time for the shit. Been working with these people, dropping everything. That's it. And she said, okay, thank you for your help. Sincerely, take care. Breaking up is hard to do, but I'm not wasting my time, man. Remember, 
I do the math on everything. Those people's max price point was $400,000. That means that my maximum commission would have been 12,000 bucks. I make $150 an hour. That means they had 80 hours of my time. You know when I sent this text message to them? On hour number 78, they had two more hours left to go. I wasn't going to do it. I can't show them a house in two hours. They were looking in camp. So it would have taken me an hour to get there and an hour back. That's 300 bucks. That's my two, that's two hours. That would have put me exactly at 80 hours. And then no matter what time I spend inside that house showing them means I lost money. Now, as a brand new agent, do you want to fool around with these people? You can. I'm not a new agent. If I want a client today, I can go get one. I'll figure something out. I will literally run a Facebook ad. I'll run a Facebook post. I'll do something. Next client to call me gets a free home inspection. I'll get a client today if I want. I'm aggressive. I don't need to screw around with people that are going to be running me through all over the place. When you know your worth, you get better with other clients. Here, this is, exact, this is a perfect example. Are you working with buyers or shoppers? I want to buy? No thanks, we're just looking. Tire kickers, they suck your energy. They're unmotivated. They won't get pre-approved. I got people, hey, I just want to go look at a couple of houses. Great. You paying cash? No. Go ahead and call my lender. Let's make sure we can afford these houses we're going to look at. We might be able to find, afford a more expensive house, but we need to talk to the lender. Let's go. Weekend runners, people that, oh, I just want to go on the weekends look at houses. Hell no. Say, this is not HGTV. People that won't make an offer. My client, I just, that, that lady I fired. But I always be, I'm always friendly with people, right? When you get that lead over, all it's about is excitement. Show them that you care about them. Just tell me a little bit about what, like, what do you love about this place? What is this? Let's do this, right? It should be an exciting time. You never know what kind of agents that they've already run into. So a couple examples of internet leads. You can see right there in a text message, right? I showed him the house. I said, go ahead and text me over. When I was standing in the house, I said, text me over your email address so I can start putting you guys on a drip. The minute he texts me, I text him back. Hey, Phil, it was great meeting you too. I'll have some homes over to you shortly. Take a look at it. Great, thanks. Here's my lender. Hey, Philip, John will be a great first place to start. Sound good, thanks. A couple of things to look at as you're working with these clients. You can see I, I emailed him, hey, here's the homes. Take a look at these houses, okay? It's just Philip in there. Then he answered me back, sounds great. I'll continue to pull homes for you. Da -da -da -da. Hi, David, thanks again for sending those. All look really nice. And this is where I got them. This is where I asked for the buyer brokerage. See what he did here? He emailed me, but he included his wife. You got to pick up on these things. That's that means I'm the that, that means I'm their agent. Now the whole family's involved. So what did I do? This was good afternoon, Philip. The very next email, good afternoon, Philip and Andrea. Now I really went for the jugular. Put all the information in there. Right. And I said, listen, I got to narrow down two homes of all the homes that I sent you guys. You guys are buying. A, and I told him, I said, you guys are buying a house today. Can you believe it? Are you excited? I cannot wait to see you guys at one o'clock. I found your house. And they were like, what? Yeah. It's either going to be Alice and Jane Drive or Emory Drive. Get excited. Okay. Another example of a internet lead. Got a lead over from realtor.com. 
I immediately answer. Good afternoon, Nicole. This is Dave Lansman, the realtor. You contact realtor.com about the home and coming. I'm out right now with clients. I wanted to think, hey, this guy's really busy. And I can't guarantee a time that will be done. Are you available tomorrow to see the home? Okay. Another reason why I said that is this. When I pulled this house, it says pending. So that means it's under contract, right? So at the same time, I email Kimberly, the listing agent. Good afternoon, Kimberly. This is David Lance. Really one group. Just made a showing request on Sweetheart, Sweetwater Drive. My clients love it. They wanted to put an offer in without even seeing it, but I don't operate like that. So I'm already telling the agent I'm a professional. Hopefully 3 p.m. works for you tomorrow for your sellers. Then I'm back with my client. Also, I see you're from 843 area code. Where are you from? Charleston? I grew up in Somerville. Now, is that going to happen every single time? No. But you see how I'm already, and like, you can see how my, my tone is. I'm like her friend already. Right? I'm like her friend. We're, 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 she's already, I'm basically making her my client. Yes, Charleston. I, now listen to the tone. I think the home already has an offer. How the hell does this lady think that thing has an offer? Huh? Did she talk? That means she talked to an agent. She talked to somebody. So what did I ask? Did you speak to someone about it? It still was active and available to me. I'm not lying to her because Kimberly said, I'm sorry, I was driving. The house was actually went under contract. I just need to change it in the computer. Thank you for considering it. Whoa, 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 Kimberly. I need to get in front of these people. Remember, Brad? I got to get a face-to-face -face with these people. A text message is not face-to-face. -face. I got to see them. I, gotta, they, I want them to know what they're working with. I'm a professional. So I said, would well, it be terribly inconvenient to see it and put a backup offer on it? I can ask. My seller's thinking about it and will let me know. I will advise as soon as she lets me know. You're awesome. Look at me. I'm sitting there brown-nosing the agent on the other side. She's like trying. Look at this. My seller is happy to have you show the house to your buyers as a backup potential. But unfortunately, today does not work for them. Tomorrow, they're having the septic service. So tomorrow won't work either. But any other day, they can accommodate. Please let me know if you like to show it one day this week. So again, did you speak with someone about it? Someone tried to set up a showing. Someone, that means an agent. And they said, no, they accepted an offer. If not, we would love to see it. Hold tight. I'll get us in. This person's a loser. They couldn't get it in. This person's a winner. I can get you in. And lo and behold, guess what? Okay, awesome. Thank you. Good morning, Nicole. Great news. We can see the house anytime from Tuesday on. Let me know when it works for you. They were doing some work on it and didn't want anyone through it right now. In the meantime, I saw a couple other homes right on the corner um, there that would be very similar. Maybe we can check them up. We can put them on the list as well. Really? I thought they accepted an offer. Now, didn't I say, or the first thing that we started this thing, I said, always be honest, right? The agent told me we were good to go. Did she not? She said I was good to go. I'm not lying to her. I'm not saying it didn't have an offer on it. I'm not saying anything. She says, great. We we're both pretty busy during the week, and we were out of town this weekend, Tuesday evening, or when we get back, might work. Sounds great. Just let me know which one works for you, and I will get us in. Nobody buys the first house they look at, Brad. All I was using this for is to get in front of them. Also, if they absolutely love this home, I told this agent I was going to put a backup offer on it. Along with the backup offer, when I send it over for them, for Nicole to sign it, I sent over a buyer brokerage agreement, which now makes me their agent. You see how I snuck that in there with them? We looked at the house on Tuesday night. Guess what? They didn't like it. And I said, listen, you guys are here just for shits and giggles. Let's go look at the house down the street that I was telling you guys about. Guess which house they bought? The one down the street. But what if I would have given up? The agent right here, this is the God's honest truth. This agent, someone tried to set up a showing and they said they accepted an offer. If not, we'd love to see it. Nicole said, well, after we were all talking, she said, yeah, I, that agent said it was under contract. And then we told them, well, we didn't really, we weren't really interested in any of the houses. So they, she put us, I don't know, she started sending us houses or something. 
but we told her we didn't really were interested if we couldn't buy that house. I said, well, look at this. You're not buying that house. And then she always says, oh, it was just meant to be that we were supposed to work together. You didn't know. It wasn't meant to be. I busted my ass to work, to work with you. I can show you countless examples of that. I have a never quit, never give up attitude. This one right here, I, I got up early morning on Saturday to go show these people a house. The, the daughter was a, a, a paraplegic and I carried her down the stairs to go to the basement, took the wheelchair down for her because the parents were a little bit older. And we were in the basement, I'll never forget it. And I pulled out my buyer presentation and I started going through the process. And they said, oh, well, what do we need to do to get our agent to write an offer in this house? I said, your agent? And at that split second, I'm telling you what, fire shot out of my damn ears. I was pissed. I got up early, showing the house. Here, I think I got it. No, I don't got it. I said, I'm your agent. I'm the only one in this room that's an agent. I'm your agent. I showed you this house. I'm procuring cause. I'm your agent. No, we feel bad. He's selling both of our other houses. I'm like, oh my God, this was three homes. This is a three deal deal. And I thought, just back off, David. He'll come back around. So we had the cash offers. <clears throat> and I said, listen, I know you guys want to get in this house fast. I can get you cash offers on your the two you need to sell. Text me over those addresses and I'll get you cash offers. I got them cash offers. The agent that had those houses listed screwed up the deal. They lost the house that I was showing them. And guess what happened? They fired their agent. And I sold both those houses and they bought another one. All because I kept my cool and I kept giving value. Hey, let me get you value. Let me get you a, 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 a CMA. Let me get you an absorption analysis. Let me get you, let me get you, let me get you all for nothing. And when the time came and their agent screwed up, <clears throat> boom, Dave is my guy. Anytime you get a client, put them in your database. Okay. Three people. The minute you get a client goes in your database and you immediately start to follow up. Okay. You might not have their, their, you might not have their home address to write a letter, but you can definitely insert them in your database and you can start phoning them every single day. Stay in contact with these people. I'm so excited to help you. I love people and helping them uh, fulfill the dream of home ownership. I'm your guy. Excitement, excitement, excitement. That help? Yeah, perfect. 100%. That's perfect. And if that, I have a run too. Hey, let me ask you: Are you? Are you? Is there any way to access these videos after after you record them? Yes. Where, where I'll get some more put up there on on Lantern Connect. Cool, cool. All right. Have awesome. you seen all those that are up there or no? Yeah, I kind of flipped through. I watched the buyer brokerage agreement. I forget which one it was. So I already heard the story about when that one guy you sent eight different contracts. So I knew the punchline there. But I was doing it for I was doing it for um yeah a, a point right. I I needed to do that. Because if not, he would just run me around. Yeah, and, and that's, I, didn't, I didn't even know this stuff until today. So, so good. it's good to know. Awesome. Yeah, that's it, man. Uh, All right. Well, have a great Monday, Betsy, Ryan, Nella. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't see everybody else on the call, so um, appreciate you guys being here as always. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving, great weekend, and let's make it an amazing week. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going shopping with my daughter. We're going to go see homes. Perfect. Uh, by the way, uh, it's a new construction. Yeah. If we if we agree to something, um, they're going to write the contract, right? The, they will um, write it, yeah. Okay, so I don't have to worry about writing it. You do not have to worry about it. Uh, just make sure you read over it before your daughter signs it. I would um, try to get something, maybe negotiate a refrigerator, see how much closing costs you can get. I mean, something. Um, yeah, because actually they're only paying two and a half. Yeah, they, they're doing that. I just did a big one and it was only two and a half and I was very pissed. 
Yeah, yeah, kind of. I was out there yesterday and, you know, of course, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we went all over. We were down in Cummins. We end up in Buford. We went to Bullground. We went to City Silver. What is it? Silver City up there? Anyway, I got to know some areas that I don't want to be in. Okay. Talking about Sugar Hill? No, we didn't get down that way. No. We end up more bull ground. We end up in Jasper. There's Whoa. some good deals in Jasper's right now. <laughs> yeah, it's two hour and a half away. But it's okay. You know what? The way I'm thinking, because right now they can't afford anything else. Uh -huh. They're going up in value. So if worse comes to worse, that uh -huh. stay two years, resell it, take some uh, equity, and then rebuy what they really need to do. Oh, yeah. I mean, talk to... Um... They Talk to Kira Helms and our broker. She made a killing on her house. So, which which one? Kira Helms is an agent with us, and I think Kira. she only had her house in Jasper a year, and she didn't made a ton of money. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm, at least you know what we can secure a house for them because it's crazy out there. You can't even secure nothing for them. It is tough. It is tough. It's gonna. You watch over the next uh, two three months, though. I think it's gonna be. I think it's going to be a, a, a different, um, I think it'll be different. So you think so? I do. So do you think it's a bad purchase up there? No, no. You could always use it for, they could use it for uh, Airbnb too. People go to people Airbnb and Jasper all the time. No, that's actually what she wants to do, but it isn't the um, um, maintenance. Um, the HOA will stop you from doing that. Uh, it depends. Not all of them. No? Nope. Okay. All right. So, yeah, no, she had that in mind also. We actually was looking for something with the uh, land because she wants to do the Airbnb and she also, she does like her chickens. She would like to have a chicken coop in the back, but you need land for that. You need uh, at least an acre for that. Uh, yeah, and there's no land right now. Gotcha. Yeah. Anyway, well, we'll see what happens. I'll see you tomorrow. You guys have a great one. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.